have you ever found yourself about to embark on something brand new? Something that in one breath is exciting and thrilling, and in the next breath, so daunting that it paralyzes you? A colleague of mine called a few days ago to share that it would be announced this weekend that she would be leaving the church where she had served for four years as the associate rector to begin serving at a new congregation as their priest in charge. My response for her was joy, joy for this next step of her journey and her ministry, joy for this new beginning. I have always seen in her her beautiful gifts of presence and compassion and her solid theological wisdom. And I can easily imagine her doing very well in her new call. But when I asked her how she was feeling about it, I heard in her voice some anxiety that suggested that as much as she was hopeful and she wanted to be open about this new call, she also was feeling insecure and a little uncertain about what lay ahead. She wondered, would she really be able to do what God was asking her to do? Fair questions. Echoed in the words of today's scriptures, we hear similar sentiments from Isaiah and from Peter. I'm not very good at this. I've never done anything like this before. I don't think I have what it takes. Into these ordinary moments of their lives, God has come in extraordinary ways, calling them forward. Now coming to Isaiah in a vision, a phenomenal six-winged creature with his face hidden, calling out to the other creatures, saying, holy, holy, holy is the Lord. The whole of the earth is full of his glory. Isaiah is awestruck, and he's overwhelmed, and he struggles to make meaning of this. Woe is me, he says, for how is it that he, a mere mortal of little consequence, a self-proclaimed man of unclean lips, how is it that he has come to witness such glorious things? He can only see his inadequacies. He can only Notice where he falls short. But God sees him. And with the touch of a hot coal upon his lips, all that Isaiah believes to be lacking in himself gets erased. And what remains is a faithful man, a faithful human being whom God loves and who loves God. And in the absence of doubt and self-critique, Isaiah is now poised to respond to God's calling with an enthusiastic and hopeful, here I am, send me. Now Simon and Jesus have already become acquainted Earlier in Luke, we're told how Jesus, after preaching in the temple on the Sabbath, went to Simon's home, where he came upon Simon's mother-in-law, who was ill with a fever. And Jesus came in, and he healed her. Can you imagine witnessing such a thing? Now, Jesus is here and come to the shore of the lake, and he steps into Simon's boat, and he asks him to take him out on the water 
And after teaching, Jesus then directs Simon. Go out a little further, he says, where it's deeper, and cast your net. We might imagine that Simon's heard Jesus' suggestion as an exercise in futility. After a long, unsuccessful night of fishing, Simon doesn't hold out any hope. It's daytime. You don't fish in the daytime. And in fact, he's pretty sure that nothing will come of these efforts. But still, he casts his nets. And then, fish, fish, more fish, an abundance out of the depths of the water and the lake, out of the depths of Simon's doubts about himself, his doubts about his abilities, his doubts about what or what might not be possible, God's abundance overflows. And Simon is overwhelmed. We may not be able to imagine God breaking into our lives in the way that God did with Isaiah and Simon. If a six-winged seraph showed up before us, we would faint. <laughs> you know, if we went to the grocery store and shopped and then came home and our bag was doubly full, we would not know what to do about that. But still, in the movements and the rhythms of our everyday lives, God is with us, and God invites us, just like Simon and Isaiah, to go deeper, to go deeper into a more intimate relationship, one that not only thrives on trust and communication and listening, and love, but a relationship that feeds us, that gives us what we need so that we can go forward in our lives. So how do we go deeper? One possibility is that we begin by making spiritual practices a part of our everyday lives. When we read and we study and we explore scripture, we find God's word there. Words that give us guidance and encouragement. Words that help us to imagine new things, to stretch, to grow. Words that help us to risk making a change or even to risk making amends. When we take time regularly to pray, we become accustomed to sharing with God all that is in and on our hearts. Without concern, God invites us to name our fears and our doubts, to name our anger and our resentment to bring our praise and our gratitude, our hopes and our dreams, to bring it all. Because in prayer, we can ask God for anything. And in prayer, we can ask and receive forgiveness for ourselves and for others. Whether it is through the Church of England's Soul Time app, or the Five Minute Daily Sanctuary app, which is one of prayer and gratitude, or the Jesuits Pray As You Go podcast, or the Episcopal Church's Daily Office Online, prayer is just a click away. It's there and it's available to us. There are no barriers. We can walk in nature, or we can walk around our labyrinth, because that will help us to quiet the inner voices so that we can begin to hear God's voice 
the voice that asks, who will I send? The voice that says to us, do not be afraid. It is God's voice that calls to us and it reassures us with words that we most need to hear, especially in times when we feel uncertain or unsure. Now another way that we can go deeper is inside of the whole of the community. St. Dunstan's offers several invitations to you each week to go deeper and to practice your faith. On ni at 9 a.m. on Sunday morning, our book discussion group meets. They gather for rich conversation to explore their faith and to ponder together what God might be saying to them. Every Monday, on Zoom, we gather for 20 minutes of beautiful evening prayer called Compline. A quick link in connects you with others. You pray together. You settle into your evening. Every Wednesday, we have Holy Eucharist. And every Wednesday, a group of women gather to knit. They're knitting prayer shawls, and they cover them with their prayers. And in just a few weeks, every Wednesday night during Lent, all of you are invited to partake in the Lenten soup suppers and the conversation that we will share as we explore together a deeper understanding of Lent. Each of these invitations, whether individual or collective, can help us to deepen our spiritual journey and our practices and our relationships with God and our relationships with each other. So what is it that gets in our way? Why do we resist? I don't have the answer. But I can tell you that with the simple words do not be afraid. That Jesus reassured Simon and reassures us that we are not alone and that we can trust in and count on God and that with God, all things are possible, more than we can imagine, with more abundance than we can handle. Isaiah's response to God's invitation to go deeper was, here I am. Simon's response to Jesus' invitation to go deeper was to leave his nets behind and to follow. How might we lean in? How might we let go of our doubts and our fears so that we can open ourselves up to better hear and trust in God and what God is saying to us. How might God be calling you to go deeper? And what might that look like? Amen. <laughs>